I love him. I love him. Happy feelings that we cultivated together. It's like an endless sea of good vibes. Etchy, etchy, hen cat girls. I didn't expect any of that, and I love what we have made together. I have so many things that I can whip out and show you. Do you, you guys want me to show you something? Okay, we In the dynamic world of online entertainment, Project Melody has emerged as a trailblazer, with a unique journey transitioning from traditional camming to the virtual realm of VTubing. Her journey has reshaped the landscape of adult content creation forever. Project Melody made her debut on Chatterbait in early 2020, donning a 3D motion capture suit that challenged the conventions of traditional camgirl performances. Back then, a virtual camgirl was never heard of. Heck, even VTubers were an extremely rare case, especially on the western side of the world. The prospect of hand and waifus existed, sure, but they were simply products meant to be consumed through reading or watching. Never before you could get a virtual waifu to interact back with you. Melody's success was so immense that it triggered a swift response from the camgirl community. Her journey at her beginnings was marked by a mixture of curiosity and resistance from her peers and onlookers. So the MMD community is, is small and weebs, we are a subculture. So I never expected to cause such a ripple that by joining an adults only human website that there would be such calamity that it would drag in viewers off-site to there that normally wouldn't even be there. Melody's popularity soared quickly. Her Twitter following skyrocketed as she gained hundreds of thousands of followers in less than a week. Her chatterbait streams garnered immense attention in the tens of thousands of viewers in a matter of days. So you have gained like popularity so rapidly. The top chatterbait girl by a landslide over 100k uh, followers on Twitter, and you have done this all in less than a week. How does this make you feel? It's it's crazy. Like, who can expect to become a meme? You don't you, you don't do it on purpose. Like, the community has to decide for you. It's it's crazy. The amount of viewers she would single-handedly pull on the website would crash the platform repeatedly. On Valentine's Days alone, she had 30k viewers, something never seen before. And this event made Chatterbait go down for the holiday as well. Well, we have crashed Chatterbait a few times. Oh wow, you actually broke the website, holy crap! Melody was truly unique as she was the only camgirl VTuber to be on the website. To put it in perspective, the Chatterbait recommended section more room like this and wouldn't even lead anywhere as it would return an error page saying, sorry, we don't have any room similar to the Project Melody yet because all the other camgirls were human. However, this success wasn't without its fair share of detractors leading to the creation of various memes and attracting criticism from the public and from her peers alike. Let's be clear here, the adult industry is already generally frowned upon and perceived as promoting unrealistic expectations. And don't get me started on anime girls. Oh god. I think we all know that no one can possibly live up to an anime girl. Although a lot of celebrities are getting dangerously close to these unrealistic proportions, there's just some stuff there that defies gravity. And that's fine. After all, there's a reason why a lot of VTuber fans would rather not see their Oshi's real face. Personally, when I look at an anime girl, I enjoy it for what it is, a drawing, pixels. I don't take it at face value. But I understand that not everybody feels that way or acts that way. But with people already criticizing men for donating to girls on Twitch, so imagine their disdain when they realize that they're now donating to a girl that's not even taking her clothes off. Not only that, but people that didn't know much about Project Melody also thought she was an AI and it's got them even more pissed off. Same one that was used on Chatterbait, all they did was switch the clothes around a little, but the 3D model itself that was used on Chatterbait that is also now on Twitch was still sexualized, like they still made it so the model's boobs would jiggle a lot and their shirt literally says fuck on it. And The other set of backlash came from fellow cam girls who felt like Melody was having it easy. After all, she's not putting any makeup on, her real appearance doesn't really matter, she's not prone to thing like aging, and 
and she wasn't actually getting naked. Some of these girls had to work a full month for $500 and Melody was getting these amounts in a matter of minutes. There is the times we don't, we don't like, we don't like real women anymore. Wait, you mean these virtual women go online and make money and I have to spend three hours putting makeup on? Yep. Get over it, whore. Your days are over. Your womb is drying up. My womb is eternal. <laughs> Adding to that, there is also a sense of vulnerability when you're streaming yourself live, and even more so when you're not wearing any clothing. Sometimes as a streamer, you gotta deal with trolls or egregious viewers, and in those instances, it's sometimes difficult to not let it show or appear visibly concerned. But when you're a VTuber, even when you're uncomfortable, you always look welcoming. And I think that part really struck a nerve with her peers because they felt like she had it easy. Not only that, but workers have to live with the consequences of their work in many ways. People view them differently, they'll treat them differently, but also if they ever want to do something else with their life, their past will follow them forever. However, Melody possesses an avatar and a persona she can shed at any time and start over, providing her a unique avenue to navigate the challenges that many in the industry face. Cottontail VA is one of the most prominent YouTubers nowadays and she agrees with this. In a recent article from Dexerto, she says, I am an acupuncturist, so if I want to someday work at a fancy clinic, they would do some research. I think I've covered my trail pretty good, but if they found out I did not save for work stuff, they wouldn't let me into that establishment. The carefreeness of having the safety net of still getting a job and not being blacklisted because I just did porn for a bit is nice. I wish it wasn't like that, but you have to play the game. During an early interview with Vice magazine, Project Melody also expresses her sadness regarding the reluctance of other models to accept her presence. It makes me sad that other models don't want me there. I don't agree with the argument that because I'm safer and less likely to have stalkers, that I shouldn't be allowed to stream. I don't think camming is defined by the risk models take in their personal lives, I think it's defined by the content that they produce and the community they built around themselves. I think it's a dangerous precedent to tell future cam models that you are somehow less deserving of being a model unless you're putting yourself at risk. By November 2020, Project Melody had reached new heights. She then decided to join Vshoujo, a talent agency specializing in virtual YouTubers and streamers as part of the first generation of talents. Her genmates included prominent indie VTubers names such as Iron Mouse, Nyatasha Nianers, Zentreya, and Silvervale. The debut happened just a few months after Holomyth debuted to America America, so Vishojo had pretty good timing in terms of introducing new VTubers to the Western audience and they were the first prominent VTubing agency based in America. The collaboration with Vishojo provided Melody with additional support, resources and opportunities, further solidifying her presence in the virtual streaming community. Mouse, kick my yeah. ass, please. I will I will buy Uno right now. Oh baby, I'll do more than just that. <laughs> Yes. Project Melody's impact extends beyond her personal success. She played a pivotal role in popularizing the concept of VTubers within the adult content industry. Her unique use of technology opened new possibilities for performers seeking innovative ways to engage with their audience. Beyond simply talking or dancing, she also held interactive users experience streams where she let her chat control her vibrator remotely and even partner with the popular toy brand LoveSense and they even made a video game for her. But Project Melody's most popular and important contribution is the entire genre she inspired with her success, LootTubers. Uh, 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 uh. Too early in this stream for this much dick! <laughs> To Ada, Ada, up and filled up. I'm look, chat. Mm. Yeah, smack that cake. <laughs> <laughs>
an entire generation of VTubers destined to entertain all kind of horny viewers. Sure, Lootubers existed prior to Melody, especially on games such as VRChat, but their popularity soared after people realized her success and the appeals to what she was doing. Remember when I mentioned there wasn't even a way to classify her when she first started on Chatterbait? Now there are so many Lootubers that there are entire websites dedicated to creating creating directories to help fans navigate them all. And unlike the regular 2D models you guys are used to seeing on this channel, I find the Lootuber genre interesting because they have a really wide array of avatars that they use, and they don't necessarily all fit the standard appearance of VTubers that we've come to expect from companies such as Niji Sanji or even Hololive. And one thing that I really thought was always a downside of L2D VTubers was how limited in the type of content you can make. So three 3D modeling really remedies a lot of those movement restrictions. Nowadays, Lootubing has evolved a lot. This Days Magazine article explains how they aren't limited to their VTuber selves anymore. If they're comfortable, there are many opportunities for Lootubers to make adult content, if that's what they want to do. If you guys want to learn more about Lootubers and the different struggles they face, I highly recommend my colleague Sleekoris Banashi video on this topic. Behind the virtual avatar lies a poignant story, one of loneliness and a yearning for connection. Melody's decision to embrace virtual interaction and sexuality was rooted in a personal quest for fulfillment and a desire to bridge the gap between performer and audience. She talks about feeling extremely lonely and felt envious of those girls that got to interact with their fans every day. She built the Project Melody character to cure this loneliness with the help of a team, namely the model designer Digitrev X. Little did she know that the person who helped her build this passion project would end up becoming one of the sources of her biggest anxieties and fears. As fate would have it, success and financial gains often alter individuals and unfortunately in many instances it can change the fabric of certain relationships. To say that Project Melody's journey was marked by challenges was an understatement. Disputes with her former friend and business partner Digitrev X over commercial rights and controversies with companies like Waifu added layers of complexity to her rise. Chatterbait crashes, bans and headline grabbing incidents fueled an ongoing narratives of high and lows involving the internet discourse. And from what we know of the internet is that when something is a hot topic, everyone wants to add their two cents. On an innocuous day, Project Melody's channel out of nowhere just shut down and got banned without any explanation. Of course, everyone jumps to the conclusion regarding the nature of her content, but she then revealed that her channel got in fact banned because she didn't own the commercial rights over her virtual body. The artist with which she had collaborated with in the past, Digitrev X, proceeded to copyright claim every single one of her videos, claiming he was the rightful owner of her body. Remarkably, her channel was reinstated after a mere 8 hours, but it was then that Melody revealed in a tweet longer that she had been dealing with this predicament for months on end. In there, she explains that despite weeks of public posts on Twitter, Melody initially tried to ignore the drama. However, as Digitrev intensified efforts to de-platform her, she felt compelled to respond publicly sharing evidence. Melody then shared an invoice indicated she had paid $5,000 for her entire body and design. She showed messages between them confirming Melody's ownership of the intellectual property, but unfortunately for Melody, they never solidified this via contract and that's where Digitrev X is biting back. The conflict took a complex turn when he proposed a partnership deal with this company Giga Music Group. In her own words, Melody explains that at some point he asked if I would be interested in a partnership with this company Giga Music Group. I was interested in hearing about the deal, but at that point I hadn't agreed to anything. 
only that I'd like to hear what they had to offer. Over the next few months, he still continued to help me with things, but refused compensation for it. Even though I offered to pay him often, he said it wasn't a big deal each time. The company later presented her with said deal for a mere fee of $40,000 per month for their services, they would partner up with Project Melody. Advised against the deal, Melody opted to work with another company, leading Digitrev X to claim that she owed him because she didn't end up working with the company he wanted her to work with. Digitrev then started insulting her, so Melody offered to pay him for the free work he had done till now, which he still refused. The situation seemingly concluded for several months until Digitrev X resurfaced, demanding Melody's interaction with his new project, Waifu, the same company that recently was quite talked about for their involvement with the talent Waifu Baby, another 3D idol. Despite her reluctance, he insisted she owed him and vaguely threatened that he would go blab to Vice magazine. In a final attempt to end the harassment and threats, Melody reluctantly agreed to boost Waifu, provided Digitrev X signed a document affirming her ownership of the assets he contested. However, Digitrev responded with further demands, requesting then $45,000 and a 25% cut of all merch sales. This ongoing drama had taken a toll on Melody, which led her to the decision to finally block him after enduring continuous public slander. The Twitch ban stems from Digitrev X misguided belief that he owns Melody's virtual persona despite evidence suggesting otherwise. Digitrev X then in turn also took to Twitter to give his side of the story. Note that his tweet longer is extremely long so I'll do my best to summarize this. Essentially, he recalls that when he started working on Project Melody, he did it in good faith and never intended to take on so much burden outside of the 3D modeling, saying he was directly involved in a lot of aspects of her career, including her success, and that it became a full-time job for him. He claimed he invested significant time and effort into Melody's project, going beyond the initial character model to provide ongoing support tech solutions, and even creative assets. He says that he didn't realize how he was cornering himself because he was not able to work on paid jobs during that time, and that the whole time he was working on her projects, he did not feel the need to draw a contract as he assumed he would get paid for his services eventually. He briefly goes over her and her team talking to the Giga Music Company, but doesn't provide any clarifications as to why the price offered was was so high, which was the main thing I was curious about. There was also some doxing allegations thrown in the mix, as he explains that he wasn't the one who threatened to dox Melody, but it was in fact his Deviant Art account that was hacked, leading to the exposure of Melody's information and affecting their relationship. Post the launch of the Waifu project, Digitrev X attempted to re-establish communication with Melody, but noted a strained relationship due to Waifu's interaction with Melody's fanbase. He stresses that that, and I quote, never brought up her paid for main character model in any of these discussions. I was seeking something in return for the months of unpaid work I did during her growth period that I busted myself. End quote. After Melody failed to include and signal boost Waifu, he then adds, I was starting to feel pretty sick that Waifu was seeming to be blackballed by influencers since Melody was alienating Waifu, so I decided to try to come up with a fair proposal to resolve this all at once and for all. I figured this is such a one-sided offer in her favor, surely this will be easy, because I wanted this over as well. Melody agreed to this, but after after seeking legal advice, he then decided he wasn't happy anymore and wanted a monetary contract instead. He recalls being annoyed and offended that she would accept all of his work for such a little request and that she wanted more out of him. Ultimately, he ends the tweet longer, saying that the final straw for him was her using one of his assets, a hat she hadn't credited him for. And to all that, I guess I'll add something out of my personal experience as a freelancer IRL. When I work as a freelancer, I have a set rate. Sometimes I accept jobs below that rate under certain terms or conditions because sometimes, you know, you're like, well, a smaller amount is better than zero. Or sometimes simply because it's a passion project or a creative project you think will be worth your while. But once you've accepted those terms, 
you really need to live with it. And if ever you want to renegotiate a new deal, you totally can, but you really need to advise your client throughout your process. You can't just hit them with an insane surprise bill by the end of the process. That's my two cents on this, and it honestly saves a lot of trouble in the long run. Project Melody sparked controversy once again on Twitter, the platform where all the offended people are, by announcing a collaboration with Amaranth. The collaboration between the virtual streamer and the well-known worker and streamer Amaranth stirred discussions about the intersection of different online communities and the evolving landscape of content creation. Melody's decision to collaborate with a worker prompted debates within the community, highlighting the perceived hypocrisy of those who embrace adult content while simultaneously criticizing partnership with individuals from this work industry. Or it could just be Twitter being Twitter and needing something to talk about again. Project Melody's influence extends beyond her individual success. Her journey challenged preconceptions and reshaped the online entertaining landscape. The legacy she leaves behind will continue to impact the evolving world of virtual interactions, showcasing the transformative power of innovation in the realm of adult content creation and VTubing. And that's all I have for this video today. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're on the road to hit the 17k viewer milestone by the end of the year and I need your help to get there. So if it's the first time or it's been a couple videos that you've watched, make it official, hit that subscribe button. And once we hit that goal, I'm commissioning a beautiful fan art from an amazing Japanese artist and you won't want to miss it. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss an update. And for some exclusive content and perks, hop over to my newly launched Patreon to get access to brand new videos that probably won't be on VTubers, but where I'll be talking about everything adjacent and everything that doesn't quite fit with this niche and that I can't put on my channel. Thank you so much for being part of this fantastic community. Until next time. Although a lot of celebrities, although a lot of celebrities are getting dangerously close to it. Although a lot of celebrities are getting dangerously. I can't say this word.